We're talking to uh, Mr. Jordan Svedanoski, who is the portfolio manager of the Pillar Global Generation Fund. The fund seeks to construct a portfolio with a superior growth valuation relationship and quality to the market. To do this, Pella targets companies that are growing, trading on attractive valuations, generating strong returns on capital and have strong ESG credentials. Jordan, thanks for your time. Now, Jordan, um, equity markets are in a very different place than they've been to over the last decade. We've got high inflation, rising interest rates. How, how do you see it from a global perspective in terms of uh, market outlook and valuations? So if we think about the last 40 years, really, the 80s, 90s, we had deflation, we had a bit of a pause, and then 2010s was a very heavily deflationary kind of period. And during this whole period, the central bankers um, were heavily reliant on monetary policy to stimulate the economy and get that kind of inflation back into the system. And they were very aggressive in doing so. So we saw interest rates fall from very high kind of levels back in the 80s, um, all the way down to zero and negative in many cases. And if, I think if we um, you know, go f in, into the future, maybe 30 years, and we, and we think back on, on the fact that we had 19 trillion US dollars worth of bonds that were negative yielding, which meant that we happily accept, accepted a situation where we paid governments to take our money, we would think that was uh, quite an extraordinary and, and, and somewhat ludicrous kind of period of, of time. And what happens during these periods is where uh, money is essentially free, debt is free, is you get a lot, of, a lot of debt, you know, growing, as I mentioned before, and that leads to misallocation of capital, as you could imagine. So what happened, um, what happened recently is we've had an end to this kind of period over the last decades, and that is all changing. And what's changing is that inflation, as you mentioned, has come into the system. Once inflation comes into the system, it's no longer tenable. It's no longer access, uh, acceptable for interest rates to remain where they were. So as interest rates go up, the price of money goes up, the opportunity cost goes up, and suddenly people start thinking about valuations. So what we've had over the last year is you've seen the, commencement, the, the beginnings of this kind of bear market, if you like. We've had this extraordinary bull market in, over the last 10 years where all assets were inflated, especially in the tech space and especially in the US where so much money is concentrated. So what's happened is you, start, you started initially seeing money coming out of the SPACs into the US, you know, the special purpose mm -hmm. vehicles. Yep. Uh, then, you, then, you got, then you had money coming out of those uh, expensive high growth uh, tech stocks and, and they were deflated without any kind of cash flow generation. And where we think the next phase of the market will be is is where investors will really have to start thinking about valuations going forward. Uh, an interesting point we saw today, you've got corporate bond yields in the States around 5%, yeah. they're short dated, yeah. and the yield on the S&P 500 is about 6%, yeah. but obviously with a lot more volatility and risk. Yeah. What does that mean for markets going forward if corporate bond yields are attractive from a, a yield perspective? Uh, the question is, should they be 5 should, should should they be 6 or 7 or 8%, right? And um, for us, the way we think about it is we value each company. We look at the free cash flow yield. It's similar to what a bond yields, except that we buy growing companies. So if you have a company on 5% free cash flow yield growing at 10% a year, you get $5 cash this year, five fifty, and so on and so forth and the year after. Now, you can compare that to a real interest rate, but you can't compare a price to revenue um, uh, you know, multiple. You can't say... Uh, a Tesla or some other company on the price to revenue of eight is cheap. When you compare it to what you uh, mentioned, which is bond yields at six, S&P yielding five, we think it's a bit uh, less than that because uh, we think the S&P has come downgrades going forward. Um, so we think the S&P has some downside um, to come. We think the S&P should fall from here. Uh, and how much is debatable, you know, should it be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 percent? But we certainly think that valuations are stretched given the alternatives are getting more attractive at this stage. And, and so in, in that regard, where, where do you see the investment opportunities for your portfolio? Well, putting all that into context, we still think equities broadly is not something you should ignore. In this volatility, time of volatility, if you're an active manager, if you really do the work in 
you know, ahead of time, you really understand these businesses and look for these quality businesses and can value them in a way that compares to all these other alternatives, you can find some great opportunities. So the problem with the markets essentially is inflation. And you think about what's causing inflation, you've got several drivers, you've got some structural drivers in terms of uh, employment, uh, uh, you know, being full and you've got lack of productivity since COVID and, and other factors. And then you've got some structural supply ish side issues. So for the last few decades, we were lulled into thinking that technology would solve all of our problems. And we forgot to invest in the real economy stuff, you know, the machines and the factories that will make the widgets and the other things that will make things that we actually consume. Okay. Now, Tesla might be valued as a tech company, but in the end, Tesla is a car, which is made out of steel, made out of copper, made out of lithium. We need that stuff to come out of the ground. We need that stuff to be formed into shape. Now, that is what's been lacking. And that is where you've got real supply issues. And what we're focusing on when it comes to that is looking for companies where they are on the cyclical side of things, focused on um, sectors where there's real shortages to come over the next five to 10 years. You can talk about copper uh, miners, you can talk about fertilizer companies like Nutrien and Mosaic in the US. Uh, this is, these are very long-term thematics that you can play at this stage at a very attractive valuation. Now that is our cyclical component of the, of the portfolio. But the majority of our fund is invested in quality secular growth strategies and, and companies. You know, 20 odd co th companies that are basically in healthcare, technology, industrials, retail, uh, such as uh, company, uh, we've got Dollar General, one of our biggest uh, investments, which is a hard discount retailer in the US. So we're talking a retailer that benefits from uh, the, the average person having to think about how much they spend on food and getting stretching the last dollar more and more. So you can find companies that actually benefit from this environment and that's where we're focusing on. So we've got that stability of the core. We're taking advantage of those cyclical uh, components in the market, it's copper, mining and a few other things. And that's how we intend to beat this kind of volatile market in the short to medium term. Jordan, thanks for your market insights. Thank you very much for having me.